Reefer Gill here. In this video, I will be covering my peristolic dosing pumps for calcium and alkalinity, as well as programming your Reef Keeper to dose these pumps. I'll be dosing calcium during daytime hours and the alkalinity during nighttime hours when the lights go off on the display tank in an attempt to keep that pH from uh, dropping too much. This is what I'll be using to dose the system, B-Ionic 1 and number 2. And then the third component to this is often left out and that's the magnesium. I can't tell you the technical reasons why this stuff works or how it works. I can tell you as a beginner that the alkalinity and the calcium buffer each other out. You need to add both otherwise one will rise sharply the other will decrease sharply and you'll have an imbalanced uh, um, alkalinity calcium ratio in your system and I also know that the magnesium is pretty much the foundation of both the calcium and alkalinity if your magnesium levels are too low you will not be able to control and maintain the numbers that you're seeking for when it comes to alkalinity and calcium so all three of these are very important the alkalinity and calcium will be dosed uh, daily while the magnesium I'll be dosing as needed. I'll test magnesium levels once or twice a week. Magnesium does not need to be introduced as fre frequently as the alkalinity and calcium so I'll be adding that as needed manually. I wanted to go over the Bionic itself. Um, when you first get it and you pull it off a shelf or you receive it in the mail you're going to notice that the water line or the liquid line is all the way down in here. Uh, it's not because it's evaporated or because it's spilled or because they're being cheap and not filling up their bottles. What you have to do is fill up the rest of the bottle with RODI water. Um, what they're giving you is a concentrated form of calcium or alkalinity and it's important that you remember to fill up to the proper line uh, with RODI water so that uh, it's not so concentrated because if you try to put it into your system in a concentrated form it's going to goof you all up. I also wanted to uh, say that uh, I'm using alkalinity and uh, calcium from Bionic only because it comes pre-mixed. It's just a little bit more convenient. Um, this company has been around for a very long time. When I had my little um, 55 gallon, well it's not little, but medium sized 55 gallon. This is all I used back in the day 12 years ago and um, now that I'm starting up my 75 gallon uh, I went with this stuff again. Uh, the drawback is that it is a little bit pricey compared to buying your alkalinity and calcium in powder form where you would then uh, go ahead and mix it in RODI water and then put it into a, a container that method is a lot cheaper. Uh, Bulk Reef Supply carries some pretty reputable uh, alkalinity calcium do-it-yourself type of uh, powders. When you mix your alkalinity and calcium, you want to make sure that you're not mixing the alkalinity and calcium at the same time. What can happen is your alkalinity levels can increase and when you add the calcium, it's going to cause the snowflake effect in your system. If you start seeing snowflakes when you're adding your calcium um, you might want to stop for, for a bit and let the alkalinity dissolve. Uh, like I said I'm dosing the alkalinity at night and the calcium during the daytime so there's not there shouldn't be any issue with uh, the snowflake effect. My understanding and again it gets a little bit more technical than what I'm telling you guys but just so that I'm throwing it out there you have an idea if you see snowflakes in your system, that's because your alkalinity levels are too high. And when you're adding the calcium, you'll see the snowflakes. It's important to have uh, calcium levels at the proper levels, as well as alkalinity levels at the proper levels, and the magnesium at its proper levels. Why do we need this stuff in our system? Again, the basic explanation is because the animals and plants in your system consume the calcium. So when you mix your salt in your RODI water or you buy it from the, the fish store, that salt comes with uh, alkalinity, calcium, and magnesium in it. 
Most salt mixes, even the better ones, will be insufficient in the magnesium part of it. So what I'm doing is I'm also checking my magnesium in my salt water mix bin uh, downstairs and adding magnesium to that bin. So when I do my water changes, I know I'm adding uh, magnesium in with it as well. So the other thing that consumes uh, calcium would be your skimmer. Your skimmer takes away uh, minor and major elements from your system. Uh, so it's important to keep those calcium levels up to par so that your corals and your coralline algae can grow and, and flourish in your system when you have the proper levels of, of these three. These are the test kits that I use to test the alkalinity, calcium, and magnesium. For calcium and alkalinity, I use API test kit. Um, the calcium is a two-part, bottle number one, number two, and then the carbonate hardness is for the alkalinity test. And as for the magnesium test, I use this Red Sea Magnesium Pro test kit. And the numbers that I'm trying to achieve are uh, the calcium, anywhere between 380 and 450, alkalinity between 8 and 12 dKH, magnesium 1250 to 1350, and I want to keep my pH between 8.0 and 8.4, however my target is more like 8.1, 8.3. Remember, we want that magnesium level to stay steady. Uh, we don't want it to go under 1250. Some people prefer 1300 so that we can have that foundation to maintain calcium and alkalinity. I'll go ahead and show you guys my chart that I use to track my testing and dosing. The way I keep track of my dosing and the results with water tests is by using this chart here. I picked it up in one of the forums. I printed it out and just attached it to the inside of my door on my stand. You can see columns here, the temperature, specific gravity, pH, alkalinity, nitrates, nitrites, and it goes on and on and on with all the water parameters of uh, your system, the ones that we are most concerned with anyway. So based on this chart, I'll have a date on the left side here and in the column I'll go ahead and write down the test results using either the API test kit or the Red Sea test kit and then I'll also um, write down what my doses have been and make adjustments from there. If the numbers start getting a little bit too high then I know to back off uh, with a peristaltic doser by a couple of minutes here and there and when I get it right it should be dialed in and it should remain like that until I uh, start introducing either more corals or I start getting a, a lot more coralline growth. Uh, you know, that's going to consume more calcium than what is being consumed at the current You can moment. see my pH level is at 8.21. This is pretty consistent throughout the day and the night using the dosing system. The alkalinity is what's going to control your pH levels. The idea with the peristaltic doser here is to slowly drip the calcium and alkalinity into your system throughout the day so to avoid any kind of shock to the system and to the inhabitants of the system. I'm going to be dosing approximately 2.2 milliliters per hour of calcium during daytime hours and then at night when the lights go off in the display tank I'll be dosing 2.2 milliliters per hour at night. Right now, uh, I originally had it set to dose for 12 hours of alkalinity, 12 hours of calcium, but I had to bring it back a little bit based on the test kits, and now I'm dosing uh, for 10 hours of each. It's important to be sure to plug your peristaltic doser into the right station of your uh, reef keeper. You want to either use station one or station four of your reef keeper. The reason is because you're drawing very low uh, wattage out of your peristaltic doser in the center stations of your power strip here on the reef keeper um, could potentially allow that peristaltic doser to stay on all the time 
because it's drawing such low uh, voltage that um, the reef keeper doesn't pick it up. So make sure you use station one or station four. All right, we're going to place both our calcium and alkalinity stations in multi timer mode. The first thing I want to do is go to timers. So we're going to go to menu, scroll down to timers, hit enter. I'm going to use timer number one for my calcium. Hit enter. We want it to turn on every day of the week. So we're going to highlight every day of the week by pushing enter all the way through. My start time for my calcium, I'm going to have it for 2 p.m. The duration I want this to be on is for two minutes. The duration we're going to have it off is for 58 minutes because the other two minutes will make one hour. And then I'm going to have it repeat 10 times. So it's going to go for 10 hours straight starting at 2 p.m. Dosing uh, two minutes worth of calcium every hour, which is about 2.2 milliliters per hour. We're going to hit enter, oscillate off, random off or no, and then we're going to save. Then we're going to uh, go down to timer number two, which I'm going to have for alkalinity. Again. We're going to have it on every day of the week, so we hit enter all the way through. My start time for the alkalinity is going to be 2 a.m. So at 2 a.m. is when the alkalinity will start. Duration is for 2 minutes. Off duration is 58 minutes. And it's going to repeat 10 times. Oscillate off. Random. No. Save. Now we're going to go to our modules. We're going to hit enter. Scroll down to modules. Hit enter. Go to the, I named my power strip uh, lower PC4. I'm going to hit that. I'm going to search for station number four. Or in my case, I named it already using the computer software as calcium doser. Hit enter. Mode. Auto, save, scroll down to function, hit enter, multi timer. Remember the calcium timer number one is what I uh, programmed this for. So I'm going to hit enter. Timer B, I'm going to leave as zero. Standby mode, we're going to ignore it. Standby delay is going to be zeros all the way across. Hit enter. Default off and save. Now I'm going to back out to uh, modules again. Hit me uh, menu for to get to the modules. Hit enter. I'm going to go to top PC4 because I'm looking for my alkalinity station 4 now. Hit enter. Scroll down to station 4. I've also already named this al alkalinity doser. Mode. Auto, hit enter, save, function, enter, multi timer. And remember, we programmed this to timer number two, so it's timer number two already. Hit enter, timer B is zero, standby ignore, standby delay is zero all the way across, hit enter all the way across, default is going to be off, and save. And that's it. That's how you program your peristolic dosers. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn on the peristolic doser so you can see how it works and how slow it works. Okay, I plugged in the calcium doser into a hot uh, plug. And you can see how slow the peristolic wheel is turning, pushing on that tubing and pinching it off at the same time. And you can see, see the drip rate, how slow it is. And these peristaltic dosers dose 1.1 milliliters per minute. 
and you can see how slowly the alkalinity and calcium will be introduced into your system which is important so that you don't shock the inhabitants but that will conclude my video let me know what you guys think if you have any suggestions so thanks for watching